Hey, what's going on, everyone? Ta'alofa lava. I hope that you have had a blessed Sabbath. And uh, I pray that you are ready to take on this week. It is Sunday and uh, the challenges and the situations of life still are ahead for this week. But I know that as you start it with God, that God will give you the strength and the wisdom to take on all of these challenges. I know that you have been blessed every single morning as your leaders put forth um, these spiritual nuggets so that you are able to not only feast on it, but also for you to be able to go back into the word of God. So if you have liked uh, these devotionals, what I'm going to ask you to do is go ahead and share um, on your page, like it, uh, the page, and also invite people just to come on in just so that they also can be blessed by what is shared on this page. Uh, one of the blessings that uh, you have heard currently is this theme that we are on and this theme of change and what that looks like for your life. I believe that um, whatever life situations that come our way, if we have a teachable spirit and we are able to adapt in all of those areas um, that I believe that God will work miracles in us. Sometimes it's hard to go through these challenges of change, um, but there's always something beautiful and something that God can teach us in those moments of change and uh, building up to something better. So I pray that you will enjoy this devotional as well. Before we go any further, just bow your heads, close your eyes, and I will lead us out in a word of prayer. Father, we want to thank you uh, for this day. We thank you for your blessings and uh, just to give us life in a new morning. Uh, and we ask you, Lord, that you would just lead and guide us, um, open up our hearts and our minds, and uh, just allow your spirit to fill our lives. We thank you, Lord, and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm going to start off by just talking about these two terms, and it's part of the production line that they use these two terms, such as a work in progress and a work in process. Um, this terminology of work in process is a product that is either finished or almost finished, and it is ready for shipping. So I know that, you know, the shelves at Amazon, as they are ready to ship things out, um, you could probably look at that as a finished or almost finished product that is ready for shipping. But there's another term which is called um, a work in progress. And the work in progress is a piece of work or product that is never, ever finished. Uh, let me illustrate it this way. A lot of you have uh, an iPad and you also have a laptop. Now, a laptop you can always switch out the memory. You can put more memory. You can put in more RAM. You can put in um, a SSD hard drive. Um, so you can always up all of those things to get its full potential. Whereas for an iPad, very rarely you can actually upgrade the hardware of the iPad. And so the iPad, I would say, is a finished product. Um, because it's, 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 it's already, all the mechanisms are already built in there, but a work in progress, I would say it was a laptop because you can still update it and, and, and put things in there to make it faster, uh, make it more robust, put more, um, hard drive in there so you can save more stuff. And so the question I have for you this morning is this, are you a work in progress or are you a work? In process. Finished. I want to draw us to this verse that is found in the book of Philippians, chapter 1 6, and it says these words Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You know, we find that Paul was in prison as he was writing the book of Philippians. And the thing about it, historically, he was captive, he was isolated, and uh, he wrote a lot of notes and letters towards the churches that he had been to, but he also wrote some letters to churches that he had not been to. But structurally, when we find this book of Philippians, it's very different to the circumstances that he was facing. Because the theme of this book is rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. From chapter one all the way to chapter four, you would just find this verse over and over and over and over again. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. 
You see, Paul here is, is describing that even though he is in prison, he is still a work in progress that God is allowing him to be in that situation so that he is able to grow. And sometimes when challenges come our way as well, um, we have two choices, really. Either we can stay the same and, and not grow because of the situation, or we can adapt and change and grow because of it. Um, in the book of Genesis chapter one, um, it tells us that when God created man uh, in verse 26 and 27, he says that we were made in the image of God. In verse 31 of the same chapter, God saw that it was good that we were the crowning glory and that we were the apple of his eye because we were created in the image of God. There was this clear cut communication between God and man. There were no interruptions, no interferences. There were no drop calls. There was just this constant connection between God and man. But it's not until Genesis chapter three that we find that this connection between heaven and earth was now severed. And that the infinite, the finite man was divorced now from the infinite God. Alan G. White talks about this and uh, shares in the story of redemption. She says, consequently, Adam's descendants could not inherit from him what he did not have after the fall. Seth was a worthy character and was to take the place of Abel in doing right. Yet he was the son of Adam, just like Cain was and inherited from the nature of Adam no more natural goodness than did Cain. He was born in sin. And because we are children of Adam and Eve, we continue to inherit this sin, this, this deep sin that is in our own lives. In Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 2, page 145, she says these words, The Lord made upright man upright in the beginning. He was created with a perfectly balanced mind, size of strength, and all its organs being perfectly developed. Every quality of mind was well proportioned, each having a distinctive office and yet all dependent on one another for the full and proper use of any one of them. But, but since this time of the fall, our minds were no longer balanced. In fact, every part of our lives were imbalanced and we no longer had that direct, the privilege of the direct communication between us and God. You know, there was a time when our children were very small and um, our youngest son, Samuel, uh, we took them swimming one summer and he was right at the edge of the pool. And uh, I'm inside the pool and I'm asking him to go ahead and jump. And he's looking at me, he's looking at the water, he's looking at how deep it is, he's not too sure about whether he should jump or not, but I'm looking at him and I'm saying, trust me, jump and I will catch you. He's looking at the water, he's looking around him, he's looking at the people who are splashing. And then just in that split second moment, he jumps. He jumps into my arms, he jumps into the pool and I allow him just to go into the water and then I grab him from the bottom and I bring him back up again. And he looks at me and so excited that he was able to jump. You know, God reminds us in John 3, 16 of what he had to do. The Bible tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, three verses 16, it says these words, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching and rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Jesus comes into our lives. Jesus comes down into our mess and he saves us. And in order for us to keep in line and in tune with him, he gives us the Bible because when he breathes in us, it's like what Adam had experienced in the beginning in the book of Genesis when God breathed into his life. 
and he became a living being and a living soul. I believe that when God, when we read the word of God, God breathes into our lives so that we are not the same, but that we are changed every single day. The bottom line is this, we can't change ourselves. We need something outside of us to change us. And God here says that he is willing to breathe into your life so that you will continue to look more like him and not of the world. That we will act more like him and speak more like him the more that we read his life into our own life. There are three people that are in you. There is who you want to be. There is who people say that you are but there is who God wants you to be. And my prayer is that God in his infinite grace and in his infinite mercy will take our lives and transform our lives so that we may be more like him. Philippians chapter one, verse 16 says these words, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for challenging us once again. Father, we have fallen short many times, but we have thank you, Lord, that you still work in our hearts, that you still change us and transform us so that we can more, look more like you. It is a day-to-day -day experience, and uh, we just pray, Lord, that every day when we wake up, that we will just dive into your words, because the more we read your words, the more we will transform our lives and look more like you. My prayer is that you will bless us throughout the rest of this day and bless us as we go into a new week. We ask all these things in Jesus' name.